Scriven cars came about because in the early days of motoring, the way of transmitting power to the back wheels uh, was, was undecided and a lot of early cars were chain driven. But Archie Fraser Nash with um, Ron Godfrey developed a system which they used on an earlier car called a GN um, where the back axle had three or four chains on it depending on the number of gears and the drive was taken through not a differential but a thing called a bevel box. The advantage was that it was a very quick gear change and there was less power loss but it did mean you had a solid back axle with no differential effect which meant you had tyre scrub and the car was harder to manoeuvre and things. So it was very effective and it is very effective for competition but wasn't perhaps the most user friendly thing on the road. And they were just a cheap way of making cars. They had a motorbike engine, chain drive, simple to make, simple for ordinary people to mend. Well, they found out they were actually quite competitive. They, they went very well, especially things like hill climbs, stuff like that. So when the Fraser Nash company was started, they became very popular as a, a home sports car, you know, an amateur sports car. And they've really been like that ever since. So the major advantage was a very quick gear change and it was a fairly efficient powertrain for not losing engine power. The disadvantage, as I say, is you had this solid back axle which meant that you had, um, it was narrowed but the, the turning circle of both tyres had to be the same and you got tyre scrub which gives it a certain handling characteristics which you'll probably be seeing um, later on when we go around the track. But it's great fun. Um, the advantages of the chain drive, as I say, it's easy to mend. You can, you know, if you break a chain you can just fix it yourself in minutes. Uh, the disadvantages are there's quite a lot of weight back there because there's chains and the cross shaft and the axle and all the sprockets and things. So there's quite a lot of metal flying around uh, and it's heavy. So that's a slight drawback. But as I say, the best thing is because it's got a solid back, back axle, the traction is great. But because it's got a solid rear axle, one wheel when you go around a corner is beginning to break traction. So they tend to drift a little bit. Um, which is part of the joy of owning a Nash because you tend to be going a little bit sideways some of the time. And it's quite controllable, it's quite fun. I don't, I'm not as extreme as some of the drivers here. Some of them are full lot round corners the wrong way. I'm, uh, I'm slightly more controlled, but we'll find out this afternoon. When you're racing them, they st their chains stretch and then they snap. So you, you've always got to be aware and carry spare chains and I've got a big roll of chain with me and I can make different lengths up if I need it, but hopefully I won't need it. When somebody first drives a chain drive, um, they can't believe how easy it is. But if you're, if you're too gentle, you can't change gear. You've got to snap it in and out. Uh, so you have to be not aggressive, you have to be positive. And it's the same with driving a Fraser Nash. It's, it's not for the timid. You don't grab the steering wheel hard, very light touch on the steering wheel, which only has three quarters of a turn lock to lock. The car is quite pointy and it'll start to, because of its solid back axle, in other words, each rear wheel rotates always at the same speed. Uh, it tends to drift and everyone here is trying to get the balance right of front grip and rear grip so that when you drift you can enter into a four wheel drift and then it's like a ballet it's not it should be elegant and the best drivers are the most elegant drivers So you have the gear lever which is opposite to normal, so first is out and in, so you have first there, second there, third there and fourth there, and that operates dogs underneath your, underneath your bum which actually select each of the chains. Uh, so you have massive cogs whirring underneath you with really big thick chains, uh, so it's a slightly terrifying concept when you think of it, but uh, otherwise it's pretty simple, you obviously have a steering wheel and pedals in the normal position, and your, your steering is locked to lock two thirds of a turn, so it's very direct, so your maximum left turn is about two thirds of steering, so it's a yeah, it's a very interesting thing to drive. And uh, once you got used to it, they actually uh, they treat you well. The gear changes are quick, and the steering is quick. So yeah, good fun to drive. The handbrake is really only for holding on the start line or stopping occasion. If I want to park it, I have a special attachment here, 
a leather belt which holds it on. But normally we just on the start line like that, into gear. So you're on the start line and you're gonna go, you're waiting, let go of that, loads of welly, spin the wheels up and off we go. First gear is good for about 60 and then the gears take you up to about 125 in, in top. Um, fabulous way to change gear, fabulous gearbox, looks primitive but works superbly well. They're great fun to drive really, um, I mean I, I raced one extensively in my youth and very much looking forward to getting back into one and it's a very active club probably because the cars are so much fun they keep they keep attracting new new people to own them, drive them and enjoy them. The gear change is, if anything, quicker than a conventional gear change. You can really do it fast. And some of the guys um, don't even use the clutch. They just lift the throttle and, and bang it in. I do use the clutch because I've got, say, a bigger chain going around, so there's quite a lot of impetus. Um, but apart from that, once it's rolling, you don't think about it. And you don't really want to either, with all that metal flying around under your nether regions. So best to forget about it. The hairiest bit is going into St Mary's for me. You're touching about 115 as you go over the lip and into the dip. And then you've got a, a more or less a double bend. Woodcot's interesting uh, because you're, you're approaching Woodcot at about 130. And um, you, don't, you want to get as much speed into Woodcot as possible. Woodcut is one of the best, so the, the, the second last corner of the track we have a, a double right-hander and it basically means you can set the car up in the braking zone and get it into a slide and carry that slide through to the chicane. Uh, and it really sort of, it's an enjoyable one because you can, you can hold the car in its slide, be looking out the side, looking at the crowd and uh, yeah, sort of a little bit showy-offy but it's uh, a lot of fun to drive. There's some nasty big gashes underneath the, the seat where it, when it snaps it can, I've got uh, I've got a duralium, sorry, an aircraft, aluminium, aircraft aluminium base to my seat, which is very tough. <laughs> but it has got some nasty graunches in it. So I, wear a I have a little bit of padding underneath. Once you're out on the track, you tend to forget about those things till it happens. There is a modern chain gang in that there is, it is probably the most active pre-war club. Um, and the cars go everywhere. They often do events where they'll drive them all the way to places like Italy. And I mean, they drive them all the way. Um, and you're talking about maybe 40 cars, maybe more than that, um, which is remarkable in this day and age and just shows the enthusiasm that they encourage. They're unique. I mean, I've, I've known most of these people. I mean, my sister and I grew up you know, as youngsters with, with most of these people here. Uh, it's like a family. The Fraser Nash Car Club is, is a family uh, and it's, a, it's, it's, it's really nice to be a member of that. And they, yeah, the community with the people who own them as well is brilliant. So it's a, a great club to be a part of and a great race to be in. And they were a proper community of people when they were new. Um, it's the Fane Memorial Trophy. His single seat is in the race, um, being driven by Patrick. His grandson is here for the weekend. I mean, it's just, it's fantastic.